keep the discussion on the air, PayPal, so these guys can get paid. But speaking of discussion on the air, I want to address the NDP, the federal NDP, because I keep talking to many, many people, and they say, the NDP are going to get trounced in that election because they're supporting such an inefficient government. And one of the problems I ran into was that when you'd look to somebody to defend the NDP, few and far between. So Andre, the producer of this show, who I've said before is virtually a communist from Saskatchewan, is joining me today because, Andre, I put the question to you. Can you defend the NDP, and would you vote for the NDP in the next election? I cannot defend the NDP, and it remains to be seen whether or not I'll vote for them in the next election. But I can say that it has been very fascinating to watch Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives start to occupy the space online that was traditionally occupied by Jagmeet Singh. But we, but we heard that we saw this in the last Ontario election when many unionists yes. clearly voted Conservative. And I heard from somebody the other day out west, they said, they're dying the wool NDP, they're going to vote Conservative. <laughs> Right like that. So is that going to happen in spades? You know, I really have no idea what's going to happen in spades, but I can say that we are seeing a, a party that has been traditionally connected with the, with the working man be, become, become diluted. They're at the point where they're so focused on identity politics. You have Matthew Green from Hamilton Centre proudly on Instagram talking about uh, the Koji Institute in Ontario and defending these actions that, you know, I'm not saying are necessarily good or bad, but I think we need to live in a place where it can be questioned. That is, no, that institute has been discredited because of what it's teaching about, uh, it's actually racist of what's going on, but that's another story. My point with the NDP is that it seems to me that they're mainly computer-driven, government-funded pinkos. <laughs> and, and the working man is not that person, or work, working man and woman. They want to have a life, well-paid, and be able to get along without government interference. And the NDP is already saying, you know, you do this. Well, I think it's adorable that you think the NDP have any sort of direction whatsoever right now because I get my inbox filled with asks for money. Right. And I take a look at what's being produced by the party in Ottawa and the messaging is not there. They're a rudderless party right now who like to take shots at the Liberal government and it's like they think that us card-carrying members are stupid and don't realize that if you really wanted Justin Trudeau to do something, you hold the balance of power. You could make Justin Trudeau do something if you put on your big boy pants. <laughs> your big boy pants. Jagmeet said that the other day. He says, the Liberal government should do X, Y, and Z. So to make them do saying, it. So make them do it. Let, make them do it or else we'll pull the plug, we'll have an election. And that's right. I think the NDP are so afraid of an election because they have no money in the coffers. They need to start asking questions about why someone like me why don't they is not the putting money in the coffers. Well, I'm, I've stopped donating money to the NDP. I give them enough money to keep my membership in place. I proudly donate to political parties when I know they're going to enact change. They are not going to enact the change that we need in Canada. Three minutes from a prairie communist. Liberties and freedom of speech are under attack in Canada like never before. So let's keep this discussion on the air. PayPal, write a check, and please include your address so I can write a thank you letter to you. And ask your friends, please subscribe. It's important to keep this on the air. And thank you.